futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Well, good day all. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up. And this is for Wednesday, the 14th of March, 2018. And we're at 4.43 p.m. Central Standard Time. These boards are gonna race in about a minute and a half. But as you can see, a down day in stocks, down in the gold and the silver, a fraction higher in the dollar index. Larry Kudlow is now replaced Gary Cohn as the new economic advisor to President Trump. Very good man, but he's a free market person. So the idea of the tariffs, he's going to have a bit of a battle on his hand with our president, and that's known going into this. Uh, as we take a look at the energy markets, the warmer weather that's now forecast is starting the way on the nat gas. And we had some reasonable numbers today, I think at least, in the... Um, if you look at what's going on in between EIA and API numbers, where they look okay. Now, when we come to the S&P, and this is the Fibonacci retracement levels, you can see that you did get up to the 68% level. You cleared it. You've fallen back, and that's what you're at, the top part of it. Market's a hard one right here. You're staying over the 18-day moving average of close. I'm sorry, 18-week moving average of closes on the weekly chart, and that gives the market a bullish bias with support back at the 27.10 level. When we just go to a daily chart, you had yesterday a big reversal down, and you followed through today. You still have the pattern of higher lows and higher highs, which is bullish. The market is still above the 18-day average of closes of 27.34, and I would be surprised to not see that that's where the pros begin their nibbling on the long side. But if you take out 26.81 and a quarter, you'll have a problem here. You'll break that pattern again without having gone for these highs and traders will start saying, oh, we're starting to see weakness in these markets. When we put the Bollinger Bands on, you tell me what happened. You had your rally, you went up uh, right here to the Bollinger Band, you fought with it the next day, came back under it, and then you let go and now you're getting that retracement. And if you look at momentum, momentum got overbought and it's starting to point down. Not saying the market can't grab traction here, but let's assume you bought it at 27.34. Where do you put a stop? You're gonna really keep one at 26.81? You could, but understand that risk is uh, $2,500. It's not small. In the NASDAQ, this is the strength. This market went up because it attacks all by itself, got up to the upper Bollinger Band, had a reversal, and guess what? Lost its bullish embedded reading today. So if the market's going to correct, it comes back to the 18-day average, at least that's my theory. If it is strong tomorrow, it should re-embed. The odds favor it won't be strong, so I'd be a bit cautious here. The Dow staying under the 18-day average still has a pattern of higher lows and higher highs, but momentum is turned down, the bias is down, this market's showing its first real problems, and if you'll notice, nothing's like the NASDAQ. All the other chart action was far and away nowhere near those all-time highs. The Russell could be the, the one that converts next. If it tonight if it tonight or tomorrow is weak, you'll lose that embedded reading. It's five points away, you gotta wait and see what it does. The question to me isn't if it keeps it here. If it makes a move back to the 18 day average, is it embedded? That's what I'll be watching. In the meantime it's not trending. You have, if you look here, a lower low higher high into a resistance area. The good news is after that one 10% correction, you haven't tried to come back to Bollinger Bands yet. But I am not one that thinks that we're going anywhere for a while. I'm very much in the camp as a technician, not as a analyst for you or anything else, that that February, I'm sorry, January 28th timeframe still looks like a top in many of the markets. The VIX has lost its volatility. So all this crazy that was going on, Take it, take a balloon, puncture it, and that's what's happened. You're going back into tight volatility like we had back here. 
We'll see what that means, but be aware of it. And what did we do today? We're making a rally in the market. Didn't quite get to the 18-day average of closes. You missed it by 60 points. We'll see if it can get up there tomorrow. Momentum, though, turning up. You've got higher lows, higher highs, but you're under the 18-day average of closes. In TLT, no question, I didn't think we were going to get over this upper Bollinger Band. But when we got the numbers today that showed uh, the combination, as you know, the other day, PPI and now CPI all together, it looks as though this quarter is going to not do as good as we thought. And what that means is, yes, the Fed will probably raise interest rates next week, but no, the economic data is not so strong that four rate hikes, at least that's my opinion, are on the table. And it's the market starting to think that way. You also see it in the bond market, which has got the higher lows, higher highs. It is overbought into resistance. Going to be important day tomorrow. If it fails, look for to try to move back to the 18-day average. The same in the 10-year note. You're right up to the top, uh, upper Bollinger Band, overbought. We'll see if it can go anywhere. The dollar index has got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. We don't yet know where this low is going to end up, and we'll find that out, I think, tomorrow. It is in the oversold area. You can see with the 28 reading, could it hang around this 18-day average a bit more? It could, but if you see bonds and notes going up, you got a problem because it means interest rates, one of the supporting factors for the dollar down. The president talked about phase two today of taxes. You know what that really is? Can he make permanent the individual tax cuts? That's how I read it. There could be other programs because come the midterm elections, obviously the Republican Party needs to have something in its pocket to make the voters, besides what the president's done, come out for that. Wasn't a good showing last night for at least what I'm seeing in Pennsylvania, and I still don't know who won that race. In the euro currency on the daily chart, uh, the market's got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Like the dollar, it sort of tries to go and it's not going anywhere. It's more of a trading range market than it is anything else. The pound, in an uptrend, higher lows, higher highs, momentum up, support back at 139.07, but it's a hard risk because you got a risk to under this 137.80 area, and that's a lot of money on the trade. In the Japanese yen, well, I did not think today you were going to take out the high of an outside day down. When you do, it ends that pattern, and it, could, it, it springs what I consider to be a bear trap. Bear because the bears thought the market would hang in there to the downside. If it sprung the way I think, I wouldn't be surprised to get to the 18-day average of closes. The trap would be on me if you take out yesterday's low. Then it means a false move up, then back down. Momentum has gone flat. The market is now fighting to see what is the trend of this market. Bitcoin, right back to the lower Bollinger Band. There were congressional hearings today on Bitcoin. And what it points to is that the ICO, the initial coin offerings, are going to be looked at harder and harder and harder. That's what I got out of what I read about it. And the rationale to me is, I don't see where that's any different than a public offering. I'm not an attorney. I'm not an SEC specialist. But that's what it looks like to me on these initial coin offerings that have been raising a lot of money. As for the Bitcoin themselves, from what I could see, Congress was very anti them, and that is because other than a speculative vehicle, nobody's really come up with the function. There's a big difference between the blockchain technology, which I think is phenomenal, and I think so does mainstream America. They're understanding it now. Banks are getting into it. And what cryptocurrencies are, what cryptocurrencies need is a need a use other than speculation, then maybe they become uh, not so frowned upon by people that are new to it. I understand the millennials think different about that. The problem is I can't go to a store and use it. I go to Overstock, but I can't go to my store. I can't go to Starbucks. I can't go to Walgreens. Can't go anywhere. And there's other than the speculative nature, that's it. Do I want to see them succeed? I do. I think another speculative vehicle and that has use could be very interesting. And for people that want to be away from mainstream currencies, it's fascinating. The Brent versus the WTI crude. Well, back up to the 387 level. So what we now know 
after the fact. There's something in the 3, 350 range is the difference between the two where you can widen out and it gets a little more demand for the uh, WTI. If you widen too much, a lot more demand. And when they narrow in, it changes on you and then they both become competitive with each other. The charts on these markets just keep narrowing in and in. The market's lost its uh, it's a vitality. I was looking today, actually I was on Fox Business, and one of the analysts was talking about uh, crude, and he doubts that the market will go back to these highs before we drop from here. I don't know. I'm seeing a, a market with lower highs and higher lows. I don't know what to do with that. It is caught, as I've pointed out to you in the Brent, between the 100-day average and the 18. Momentum is flat. WTI crude is a bit more bearish, lower highs, lower lows, staying under the 18-day average, staying away from both the Bollinger Band and the, low, and the 100-day average, but if you take a look, you're in oversold territory, so I can make an argument back to 61.70. Gasoline, I think I mentioned just yesterday, I said, you know, you get down to these Bollinger Bands and you're getting into that time frame now where you got to be a bit cautious. The refineries, we, we saw a lot of gas was being used because the refineries had been in maintenance. Now they're coming out of it. We're already going to be in April soon. The demand for gasoline is going to start picking up. That doesn't mean it's a bull market yet. It's just a seasonal thing you look at. The market is neutral because it went back towards that 18-day average, took out that high. I don't know what to do with it. In the NAF gas, you get the first warmer weather in the break of those nor'easterns, down you go. I mentioned to you yesterday and the day before, I thought the pros were coming out of this market, and now they are. Uh, you even made a lower and low than the previous one. I'd call this market neutral as can be at this point. So I want to remind you again, having the live webinar, you make it fun. There's no charge. You have an invite. I'm not sending them out again. They're done. They all went out twice today. So it's in your junk. It's in your regular mailbox. It's in your clutter box, or you've responded. As for the rest, if you want my research, this is how you get it. You can click up here at any point on YouTube, or you can underneath us. It'll say on some websites, click here. Otherwise, just go to our website, sign up for the info. Hope to see you all at 1230 p.m. Central I think it's called daylight time. I think that's what we're in now. Central daylight. I think I said standard before. Central daylight time. I'm I Repstein. Take care.